Thank you. Dear international guests, ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here today at this seminary and this uh, exhibition about freedom of speech. One could say that uh, this is an everyday and ordinary situation. Most of us uh, have attended a number of such events. But today is really different. These are no ordinary circumstances, certainly not. While we are holding our seminary inside this building, heavily armed police are guarding us outside this theater. The police, they are also present here in this room. Streets nearby are closed for traffic. I myself arrived here today escorted in a police car and escorted inside this building by a policeman with a machine gun. There is something entirely new for us here in Norway. For 70 years after the war and the occupation, we have not had to defend domestic freedom of speech, freedom of expression with machine guns. But today, here in Drammen, this is exactly what we are experiencing and what we are facing. We are, of course, uh, very thankful to the police and the security authorities. They are doing a crucially important job defending our values, defending our rights to gather, to speak freely, to write and to, to draw what we want. Defending the very basis upon which our democratic system is built, no less. While we acknowledge those responsible for our security here today, I also think it is time for us all to reflect upon the situation. A peaceful gathering around the topic of freedom of speech guarded as a fortress. The price of this important democratic value is becoming high even here in Norway. In the broader picture, freedom of speech is not in danger in our country or in Western Europe. But when it comes to these specific topics that we are dealing with today, cartoons, blasphemy, and certain aspects of the Muslim religion, the story is very different. In this particular area, freedom of speech is under siege in Europe, just as we, in a way, are under siege here in this theater today. We could also describe the situation with different words. In this area, freedom of speech is literally under fire, a rain of bullets, as we have seen in such a dramatic and disgusting way in Paris and Copenhagen recently. These extremists, they hate our values. They hate our freedom. And they hate the Jews. They use automatic weapons against cartoons, bullets against, pen against pencils. They kill Jews, not for anything they have done, but for who they are. Just as we have seen so many times before in the dark annals of European history. Dear international guests, it has been interesting listening to the speeches ahead of me, and I also look forward to listening to those to come. We have heard and we will hear about a lot of different systems of government and the way they practice freedom of speech or the lack of freedom of speech. Some of these systems of government are totalitarian. And we will hear about problems and hardships facing those who choose to speak up even when they have the authorities against them. When the reaction from the government is persecution, not police protection. I would like to say to you that I understand you, at least to some degree. And that is also because I myself am the son of a refugee. A refugee from a not too distant past when totalitarianism was the ruling ideology also in much of Central and Eastern Europe. My mother was born in communist East Germany, 
or the almost mockingly so-called German Democratic Republic. My grandmother took her two children with her and fled from East Germany to create a new future in the free world. Mom was 10 years old when she arrived in Norway as part of a Red Cross program for children living in refugee camps in West Berlin. What was supposed to be a nice Scandinavian summer away from the dull life as a refugee, well, she's still living here today. As a child, and also in my early youth, I visited East Germany a lot of times. My grandparents were divorced, and grandfather, he stayed in GDR when his ex-wife and two children secretly left to flee to the West. My grandfather lived the rest of his life there, and we used to visit him during the summers and other holidays. My experiences with communist Germany has influenced me a lot. It has shaped some of my views on politics, and certainly my views on human rights, not least the freedom of speech and the freedom of expression. In GDR, people did not dare to speak their minds. This was in many ways, a given fact. Something everybody knew and everybody re related to. It was not that uh, the East Germans didn't have strong opinions about the government, about communism, about the ban on traveling. Most people had a lot they wanted to say on these topics, but they kept their mouths shut. They feared the consequences. They feared the secret police, Stasi, Ministerium für Staatssicherheit. During the communist years, 600,000 East Germans worked as informants for Stasi. This is a lot in a nation that never had more than 16 million inhabitants. This particular East German collective fear is masterly illustrated in the movie from 2006 Das Leben des Anderes, the living, the lives of others. I myself can also remember very well this uneasy feeling that you could experience everywhere in East Germany. It was almost as it was a part of the air you breathed. Even within the walls of the house we stayed, the private home of our relatives, we had to ask who could hear us, where are we being bugged? Where are our phone calls being caught on tape? Today, there are few things that provoke me more, make me more angry than this. That people should fear, that people should feel fear about expressing their opinions. In my view, this use of fear, fear mechanisms to suppress free speech are actually expressions of a totalitarian way of thinking. Yes, as I see it, it is the very trademark of totalitarian ideology. And that is the case, whether these demands and limitations of the freedom of speech is being defended by political arguments or by religious arguments. In post-communist Europe, in our time, the emphasis is on this last point, religiously supported threats against free speech. The same year as the Berlin Wall fell, Europe experienced its first fatwa directly related to this matter. The reaction from Iran on the British author Salman Rushdie's novel, Satanic Verses, was an Islamic death penalty. After 1989, Rushdie has for more than a quarter century had to live with the strongest security measures. I feel that Norway has a special responsibility to fight these kinds of attacks on freedom of speech. This is because we are one of fortunately few Western countries that have actually experienced an Islamistic political attack on our own soil related to the Rushdie affair. I am, of course, referring to the shots fired against publishing director 
in Askehaug Publishing House, William Nygård, in the autumn of 1993. Nygård had published Rushdie's novel in Norwegian. This act of free speech almost cost him his life. William Nygård was hit by three shots that were fired against him outside his home in Oslo this October morning. And we were only millimeters away from having to face an Islamistic inspired political murder in our own country. As we know, the situation has unfortunately not become any better in the later years. The cartoon controversy that started nine years ago, it started nine years ago, but it is unbelievably still an ongoing matter. Editors, journalists, writers, cartoonists, and others have had to deal with the aspects of threats and fear when they relate to topics concerning the Islamic religion. In 2006, I suddenly found myself facing numerous death threats in the Muhammad cartoon crisis. Being one of the Norwegian editors to reprint the Jyllandsposten cartoons. I stopped counting death threats when they reached 50. It was a hard time for my family having to relate to lifeguards, police protection, living on different addresses, and so forth. I'm often asked the question of whether what I did was worth everything my family and I had to go through. I really want to answer yes to this question. This is because I find these values so important and fundamental. And in East Germany, I saw, I really saw what a society becomes when these rights are being suppressed and denied. Our Western societies are far from perfect. We have a lot to be ashamed about. But the fact that we have built democracies where everyone has the right to say, think, believe, worship, write, and draw what he or she wants is nothing to be ashamed of. On the contrary, these are universal rights, the fundamentals of a true democracy, something every human, should, or something every human being should experience no matter where in the world he or she lives. But in today's situation, these values are most strongly being defended in, in the Western societies. And that has made our part of the world the place where people from all around the globe want to live. We should be proud of these fundamental values. They are worthy of being exported and they are worth defending, no matter how much flags and embassies are burned in the Middle East and no matter how much they threaten us with acts of terror. Thank you all very much.